Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about transformations of functions. Transformations of functions are all about moving different functions kind of up and down, right and left and all over. So we want to start by talking about the library of functions, which I have other videos about if you need to review them. It'll be important for you to know these shapes and a few basic properties in order for us to do transformations. So let me quickly run through the different ones we're going to do. So we'll look at f of x is x squared. We will look at the square root of x. We will look at absolute value, x cubed, and the cube root of x. So what happens when we're doing transformations of functions is that we will see that the shape of our function stays the same, basically. But then the functions will move around on the xy plane. There are basically four types of transformations we'll do. So vertical means it's going to move up or down. Horizontal means it's going to move right or left. Reflection means it could flip over the x-axis or the y-axis. And then stretching or shrinking is where I do see the shape change a little, is this is where we make the graph kind of bigger or smaller, and I will show you that in detail. The best way to show that is to go over to Desmos and just demonstrate it a little before we look at the math behind it. So we're going to start with x squared. looks kind of like a u, and I want to show you some transformations. So let's start here. Watch how this is moving up and then it's going to come back down. And what happens is the shape stays the same. It didn't do anything different. It just moved up and down on the graph. So let's take that back to the origin and look what happens if I move to the right or the left. Again, the shape didn't change. I just moved the positions. I kind of think about it like moving furniture. If I move my couch across my living room, the shape stays the same. I just change the position of where it's placed. I could move both at the same time. That's kind of fun, and you can see it kind of bounce around, which shows you this kind of looks like a video game. A basic video game, but you get the idea. Again, I put it back on zero, and let me show you something different. So I'm going to show you that this is facing up, but when I make it negative, it faces down. Now, a couple things are happening here when I'm doing this change. See how this time it kind of widens out, or it stretches up? So this is what we call stretching and shrinking. So stretching goes up and shrinking goes down. There's too much. And then reflection, I flip it over. So you can see that change. Now we can do all of these changes to different graphs. I'm going to click off that x squared and maybe change to the square root. So let me take everything back to normal. And again, here's the up and down. Here's the right and left. And this one, I will be able to see a big difference if I flip it over. So here it flips under. And then if I want to show it flip the other way, I'm going to put a negative inside for you so you can see it flip over. And again, we'll go into detail with that later, but I want you to see that there could be flipping around the y-axis. There's a flip. And then I can flip around the x-axis. There's a flip. And we could keep going, right? I could keep switching the different kinds of functions I have, and I can hit the different kinds of transformations to show you it can do all kinds of things. But that's what we want to cover in this section, is what happens when I change these different pieces of the function, what happens to the graph. Again, I'll make this link to this program available, so if you want to try it and play around with it, you can. So let's look at how we will be able to tell what kind of transformation we have. So a vertical transformation will look like either f of x plus c or f of x minus c. The plus c will shift the graph up c units. The minus c will shift the graph down c units. So let's look at this graph. f of x is x cubed minus 4. The first thing I'm going to do is say this minus 4 is going to go down by 4. So this is my vertical. As we get used to graphing, I'm going to start with the base function. So the base function x cubed goes through 0, 0, it goes through 1, 1, it goes through negative 1, 1. And you should know those points. You should also know the shape. So this goes up, and then it goes this way. So the minus 4 says we're going to take point by point and move down 4. So I'm going to use another color, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's down 4. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. There's down 4. Last one, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm down 4. Another thing you can see is I used to be at 0, 0, and I had 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the left, 1 down. Same thing in the transformation. 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the left, 1 down. 
I connect those dots. The shape should look basically the same, not a perfect artist, but you get the idea, I just moved it down. So let's say I have x squared plus two. X squared looks like a U. My first step is to say the plus two is going to go up two. I'm gonna draw the base function, zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. I'm gonna make it look like a U. Then in another color, I'm gonna move up two. So up two, this one goes up two. Now I'm at three, this one goes up two. I'm also at three. I'm gonna connect those dots and it should look like it just moved up two. Again, you can go back and say, the original was zero, zero, one to the right, one up, one to the left, one up, my transformation. Now I'm at zero, two, one to the right, one to the left. I see those same kind of points. Our next type of transformation is horizontal. And notice now the C is inside the parentheses. So I have F of parentheses X minus C. That's a shift to the right. I have f of x plus c in parentheses, and that's a shift to the left. Now, this probably feels opposite. Like, you probably think minus should go left, negatives are on the left, and plus should go to the right, but that's not what's happening here. What I see is x minus c is 0 when x is equal to c, so I moved to c. I went to the right. If I look at x plus c is zero, that says x equals negative c, and that's why I go to the left. So this kind of zeroing out really helps me think about where I should go. So let's try that. I'm gonna start with f of x is x plus five squared. So the plus five, if you wanna write x plus five is zero, which is x equals negative five, that says move five left. My starting function, zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. I connect the dots. And then I move everything to the left five. So one, two, three, four, five to the left. I'll have one on the right, one on the left, or you could count them and move them over. Here's my new parabola. So I'm always drawing these twice. That really helps me when I do it. You are not gonna draw twice when you're doing the homework. Um, let me show you really quickly what that will look like. Look at this one, it says move the slider h so the graph of y equals x squared gets shifted to the left two units. So I wanna to go to the left, so watch. See how this goes to the right? I wanna to go to the left and I wanna go two. So see how I'm here? Notice it's also giving you the function, so this is saving you a lot of steps. You can type in here, you have f of x equals x plus two squared. This next graph says f of x is the square root of x minus 2. So this x minus 2, I look at where is it 0? It's when x equals 2, so I'm going to go right 2. My original function starts at 0, 0. It goes 1, 1. With the square root, I usually put in 4, 2. Square root of 4 is 2, and I draw to connect. Now I'm just going to move that to the right. So 0, 2 to the right goes to 2. This 1, 2 to the right now is at 3, and then 4 to the, to the right is at 6, and then I connect. Now we're not going to draw, we're just going to talk about what kind of transformation I have. The first one, x minus 3 squared, this is going to go right, 3. Absolute value of x minus 7, this is going to go down, 7. Square root of x plus 4, that's going up, 4. And then square root of x plus six, that is going to go left six. So we wanna be able to just look at the function notation and know what the function is going to do. Our next type of transformation is called a reflection. If I have a negative outside the function, that is going to flip it over the x-axis. If I have a negative inside, so I'm taking f of negative x, I'm going to flip over the y-axis. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is show you that really quickly. This is x squared, and if I flip it over the x-axis, this is negative x squared. See how it went upside down? The one I always think about for the y-axis is the square root of x. And then if I flip it over the y, now it's going to the left. This is the square root of negative x. So those are the ones I think of to really help me out. 
So I'm going to show you that a little bit better, same function, but we'll also talk about domain and range. So I'm thinking it flipped upside down. So 0, 0, I have 1, 1, I have negative 1, 1. I'm hoping by now we're getting kind of used to this look of what we had. So what we used to have, and let me draw kind of like a dashed kind of thing, to say we used to have this, right? We used to have x squared. And if I think about x squared, the domain was all reals. But the range was only positive or zero, so I had zero to infinity. Now that we flipped it upside down, the domain stayed the same, negative infinity to infinity, but my range really changed. Now I can see I have mostly negative answers, so this is negative infinity to zero, so I see a big change in the range for this one. The other one we talked about, the square root of x. So we said instead of right, it's going left. So the right, right, this is our original square root of x. But now I'm going to the left. So let me draw that in for you. Here's the square root of negative x. Now the domain of the square root of x was 0 to infinity. And the range was also 0 to infinity. This time, this flip over the y-axis changed the domain, but it left the range alone. So the domain now is negative infinity to zero, and the range is zero to infinity. So it's not always going to do the same thing. Just by changing, by using a reflection, doesn't always change the domain, doesn't always change the range. It kind of depends on what function I have. Then we can put these together. So combined transformations means I have a function that has multiple types of transformations. And what you want to do is use your order of operations to decide how you're going to do this or what you want to do first. So here's something where I'm going to like do a couple different transformations. So the first one, f of x plus 5, normal, just one transformation, which is up 5. f of x minus 2, only one transformation, which is right 2. Then C is f of x plus 1 minus 3. So two things. It's going to go left 1, and then it'll go down 3. Then negative f of x plus 4. So again, two transformations. I'm going to reflect over the x-axis, and then I will go up. Four. And I would want to do it in that order, kind of reflect over x, then push it up. That would really help. So let's try that. Here I have f of x is negative the absolute value of x plus 6. So I have two transformations. This negative is over x, and this is up 6. I'll draw normal absolute values since the first time I did absolute value today. So it looks like a v goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Now I'm going to flip it upside down. So I will show you that first. So flipping it upside down, zero, zero stays the same, but instead of positive one, I go negative one. Positive one goes negative one. So now I have this shape. And I'm going to take away my original absolute value so this doesn't get too messy. Now I want to move this up six. So zero, zero goes up to six. I think it's easiest to go one on the right, one on the left, instead of having to think move it up six, but you could do either one. So here is my up six. So this is my overall answer. This is my f of x. Here's another one with multiple transformations. I have x minus two cubed minus four. This is going right two and then down four. I will do it in three steps to kind of help us out. So the first step is draw x cubed. x cubed, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Curves up and it curves down. I'm going to do minus 2 first because I think about if I plugged in a number, say that I wanted to plug in 5. If I plugged in 5, I would do 5 minus 2. That would be the first thing I do. So I want to first do that minus 2. So I'm going to move 2 to the right. So 2 to the right. 1 to the right, 1 to the left. I kind of try to do this 1 to the right, 1 to the left each time. It really helps me out. I'm going to erase my original function so I don't have too much on my graph. Now I'm ready to move down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 to the right, 1 to the left. Curve up, curve down. Let's erase this second step. 
So before we really start talking about stretching and shrinking, I want to give you a couple pictures of it because I do think this is probably the hardest of the transformations. So look at this f of x. Um, it's kind of this u-shaped one, and g of x is the transformation. Do you see how it looks pushed down? Like it looks like it kind of got smaller. And how I kind of look at that, is it bigger, is it smaller? Kind of look at points. This point is now way down here. Let's pick another point. This point, and then I look down, it's way down here. So it's not as much. Think about if this was your money, and you used to have this much, but now you have this much, it's your money shrink. It, it got to be less. So I want you to see it kind of got pushed down and squashed. Here's another one, same kind of thing. This is this shrinking. So f of x used to be high, but now it's at g of x, which is much lower. So I see this, it went down, and that's what I'm looking for. The difference in going down is, see how they have the same beginning point? When we were doing other transformations like vertical, the beginning point moved. So this is not the transformation of move the whole thing up. We're multiplying by a number that shrinks it. It could be stretched. It could get bigger. See this f of x and then g of x is higher. I'd rather have my money do that. I would like to see that be stretched out and be even bigger. So this big, even bigger, that's what we call a stretching. So how do we tell when something stretches or shrinks? And that comes from the coefficient. So two things can happen. If a is greater than one, that means it's a stretch. It's getting bigger. If a is between zero and one, that means it is a shrink. Sometimes we call that condensing. A is positive. What I think about here is if there's a negative, that's a reflection. So that's something completely different. So I'm just kind of looking at this almost absolute value there to say what kind of number is in front of my f of x. If it's a one, nothing happens, no stretching or shrinking, but any other number, I know there's going to be a change. So here's a good example. I have f of x is 3x squared. Well, I know what it usually looks like. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Let's draw that little graph. This 3 is stretch. And this is really by a factor of 3. So what I think about is instead of this being 1, 1, now it's way up here at 1, 3. Instead of negative 1, 1, it's now way up here at 3. So if I connect the dots, it should look like it's inside of it. It should look like it got stretched. Kind of think like a rubber band. I take the shape and I stretch it. It gets thinner. Here's one that's a shrink. I have 1 fourth of the absolute value of x. So this is shrink or condense by 1 fourth. So absolute value, usually 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and you connect the dots. Now I'm changing it to a fourth. So instead of 1, it's only a fourth. And instead of 1, it's only a fourth. So here, I can see it's shrunk. It's lower. This one has three transformations. The negative is reflect. over the x-axis. The 2 is stretch by a factor of 2. And then the 5 is up 5. Okay, so this becomes like us really thinking about, I know it looks like a U. I know the base shape. I know it is going to flip over, I'm going to multiply it by 2, and I can move it up 5. So let's do that in step. Let's think about this 0, 0. And it used to be 1 to the right, 1 to the left, but now I have this negative 2. So instead of going this up here at 1, 1, I want to go negative 2 on the right and negative 2 on the left. So I did two things at once. I flipped it and I stretched it. So now here's the first part. That takes care of this. Now the up 5 says move it up to 5. This point was negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is at 3, and then at 3. So here is my x squared. If you wanted to, you could do that quicker. You could just say, like I know instead of 0, 0, it's going to be up at 5, 2 to the right, 2 to the left. I do think that 2 tells me how far the next point goes. 
you'll discover as you're doing it what works for you. So if you want to do every little step, that's okay. If you want to jump, that's okay too. This one also has three transformations. I have this negative two, which is flip and stretch. And then this is left four. So this time I want to start with the left four. So I'm going to move to the negative four, four. And then instead of going one to the right, one to the left, I'm going to go two down and I'm going to go two down. So I did it both at once. I moved over instead of being at zero, zero, I moved four to the left. And then the negative two tells me go down and two and two. Here also, I have three transformations. I think this is the hardest one that we have seen today. Here's why it's hard. When you take this negative x minus three, it's deceiving. Set it equal to zero. That is my best strategy here. That way I have negative x is positive three, and then x is negative three. So now this is going to go left three. So what just happened? Usually when we say minus, Minus goes to the right, and this time minus is going to the left. How come? Well, because negative x minus 3 is the same thing as negative 1 times x plus 3. So there's kind of a hidden plus 3 in here, and I think that's super tricky. So I think the best strategy is when you see this, like a negative x under the radical with another transformation, set the whole thing equal to 0, it will really help you out. So I know I'm supposed to go over to negative three because I went left three and then plus two says go up two. So this is my starting point. So I would start at negative three, positive two, and then this here, this negative says go to the left. So one over, one up, curve it around. So that's probably the hardest is when you get a negative under a radical like that. All right, let's go a little bit backwards. So that was, I gave you a function, you give me a graph. Now I'm gonna give you a graph and I wanna know what function it is. When you look at this function, hopefully you can tell it's an x squared and you can see that it moved up three. So that says I have f of x is x squared plus three. So you're just identifying the transformations and writing them as a function. The next one, this is absolute value, but it looks like it moved twice. So if I go over, let's talk about what this point is. So I went over one and then down one, two, three, four, negative four. So I had two transformations. So I have f of x is equal to the absolute value. To go to the right, I did x minus one. And then to move down, I did minus four. So I think what makes me go to the right? Negative. What makes me go down? Also negative. This one, when I look at it, looks a little different, but overall I hope you see this as some version of x cubed. Generally, x cubed looks like it's going up because this one looks like it's going down. I think it must be a negative in front of the x cubed, right? That makes it flip over this way. But I also see it pushed to the left and now it's at negative two. So this means I have negative x plus two cubed this is my function. I also like that sometimes we don't even know what graph we have. It's just kind of something put together. So here's something put together, it kind of zigzags a little, but it's f of x. I want to do f of x plus four. So what I'm going to do is point by point, I'm going to move it up. So this one that's down here at negative four, I go up one, two, three, four, I'm at zero. This at negative one, one, two, three, four, puts me at three, let's connect those dots. This next one that looks like negative three, one, two, three, four, now I'm at one, connect those dots. And the last one at negative one, goes up one, two, three, four, puts me at three, there's a little bit of a curve there. So they should look like it just got pushed. Same graph. But now I'm gonna do minus three. Remember minus three is right three. So this time push to the right. So down here, I go one, two, three. There's my first point. Second point, one, two, three. I like to connect the dots as I go. The next point, one, two, three. Connect that dot. And the last one, one, two, three. Give it a little curve.
this goes back to that same graph and we're going to flip it. So whatever is negative goes positive, positive goes negative. So negative four becomes positive four. Negative one becomes positive one, connect the dots. Negative three becomes positive three, connect those dots. And then the last one, negative one becomes positive one, a little bit of a curve. Glad that we have this one where we're going to do a shrink. So how do we do a shrink when we have something like this? Well, we take the y-coordinate and we multiply it by half. So it looks like negative four, half of negative four is negative two. This is negative one, which becomes negative one half, connect the dots. Negative three becomes negative 1.5, connect the dots. And the last one says negative one, so I make it negative one half and I give it a little curve. So I hope that's a good introduction to transformations. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to go through all the work. You can always use the program I gave you as well to kind of play around with it and see what things look like, or you can type things into Desmos to make it look better than the drawings that I showed you. Good luck.